right guys, this is what we're into today. We built a lake slash pond, uh, whatever you want to call it, last fall, last October. And it has literally rained ever since we've got this thing done. We did not, we were not able to get the overflow pipe in last fall because the, the weather just didn't cooperate. Well, here it is uh, in the winter and this thing thing's almost full and it does not catch that much water. So we got the uh, dump truck and got the little 304 behind us. We're gonna head out there and uh, put this overflow in. It's, it's dry, it's not as dry as I'd like for it to be, but at this point we just, we just need to get it in before it goes over the dam. We got a couple feet to spare, but it's getting close. So let's uh, head out there and get unloaded and see what we got. guys here she is we got a track over here and all the pipe we're gonna put uh, six inch pvc schedule 35 in this one sand this is the beach everybody's gonna wonder why i didn't throw the sand down there in the water well the reason why is with all these dang rains we had i put it out there it all would have been washed in the bottom of the pond so whenever it gets filled up we'll take the track hoe and cast it out there but you can see it's got about three and a half feet from being full but this thing, this pond does not catch very much water at all. It has very little watershed. It's basically that little area right there. And to give you guys an idea how much rain we had, this thing's about 16, 17 feet deep. We finished at the very end of October, and this is March 11th, and it's almost full. So we're gonna sneak over there. We're gonna put the overflow in right over in that corner. So. We'll uh, work our way around over there and get started on that. Luke's getting the laser set up so we can get a few shots and make sure uh, the dam's still true and nothing's settled out. I don't like when they get water in them this fast after we build them, but it, uh, it is what it is. It seemed to held up pretty darn good through the winter, especially with all the rain we had. So set up we're gonna put the uh, pipe right here kind of come across this at an angle right through the track hole, and then head down over the hill towards that pole where it's already naturally draining down through the woods there so I mean we could take the shorter distance up and over the dam and sometimes you have to do that but I prefer to go at an angle and uh, stay off the dam if at all possible so Luke's uh, double checking our grade make sure our dam's still good it looks pretty damn good especially for all the rain there's one little bitty pump over there but it ain't much all right guys we're digging in some of this nasty nasty sticky Perry county clay it's just some look at that it's like a big gumball anybody that's ever dug with one of these small buckets knows how much of a pain in the butt it is to keep the dirt from getting stuck in them. I've tried all kinds of stuff over the years. I've tried putting chains in the bucket and tried, you know, flailing the edges. And the trick I learned that works better than anything is your digging technique. Well, let me back up here and I'll fall over the hill. Some of you may already 
before you know that trick. And some of you may have a better trick than that. But I just wanted to share what uh, what works for me. If you guys know of something better, let me know and I'll try that. But uh, this one seems to work pretty good for me. We're going to slide down over this. Take that, take that shovel, make sure you work out. Yeah. All right, guys, there it is. We got her all in. She's not perfectly straight, but she's pretty dang close for coming down over the hillside like that with a mini X and not a backhoe. But uh, we're gonna backfill her. Gotta be careful. We got some random rocks in here, so we're gonna pick through those, get her backfilled, and get her closed up, and call her good.
everything was going pretty smooth and the track will quit moving and apparently it's pretty important that that little fuel gauge be on the E. Whoever would have guessed. So here we sit waiting on fuel. Rookie, rookie mistake. But uh, that's all I gotta say about that. I mean the good news is at least it's not at the bottom of like a 70 foot mud slide and then hanging off the side of a dam. I mean it could be worse I guess. Luke, I cannot believe you ran this thing out of fuel. <laughs> and I love your makeshift uh, fuel cans there. They, they're doing the trick, somewhat. Uh, I think you need to label out definitely with please do not drink. No sugar added. Oh yeah, well that's good. This track, oh, you know, it's it's a diabetic. It don't <laughs> like sugar. Let me tell you, that was one self-inflicted ordeal that was just unnecessary. I filmed as much of it as I could. <clears throat> one thing you didn't see is the track I was sitting on the hill, door downhill. I was all up over top of the seat trying to get the injector lines busted loose. Fell out of it, rolled down the hill, got stuck in the dang fence down there. Ugh. Good news, we're full of fuel now. Let's get back to work. Purring like a kitten. All right, guys, this is what we ended up with at the end of the day. We're uh, 18 inches below the dam, pipes there. And down over the hill comes out down there by those rocks i know that's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's wet it looks dry on top the wind's been blowing today but it's wet and we got to be back in here later with the uh, 110 the power rack and possibly the dozer this is the same job we poured the addition on and uh, we did a few things up there we dug the electric going from the house to the garage we uh, put in a pad for the air conditioner to get that set. And then over there on the other side, we loaded up some uh, chunks of concrete that were left over from uh, mostly from the pump truck and what little bit extra we had off, off all of our pours. We're gonna call this adventure over. Hopefully you learned two things today. One, a little bit of a technique of how to dig with a small bucket. And the most important one, the fuel gauge is not for looks. It actually serves a purpose in life. So. Don't be a dummy like me and run it out of fuel. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, if you could just take a few seconds to hit that thumbs up button, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on the next great adventure or the next project on Dirt Perfect, hit that subscribe button. <laughs>